video. Today I'm going to share with you some of my top tips for watercolor that no one is talking about. Hi, welcome. If you're new here, my name is Irit. I'm a watercolor and mixed media artist based in Austria and on my channel I share everything watercolor related. So these are just some tips, I don't want to call them hacks, but just very, very helpful tips that I have come to use every day, every time I sit down and paint. And a lot of these I feel are not talked about enough, at least in my opinion. So <laughs> today I'm just going to share some of those with you. And the first thing you already saw I highly recommend before you start painting, just a few minutes before, not half an hour before, because if you're in a dry climate, you'll be back to square one. Spray your watercolors with water generously. This will activate them, especially if you're using dry watercolors from tubes or pan watercolors. Some formulas are more moist than others, but for the most part, it will really make your painting experience richer. You won't have to work harder to get the pigments full intensity and also your brushes will appreciate it because you won't have to scrub into the paint. So the spraying water tip is a pretty well-known one, but I think the next ones are a little less well-known and let me know in the comments if you use any of these and of course what are your top tips when painting with watercolors and mixing watercolors. My second tip that I find really crucial to the way that I like to use color is to use a palette or a mixing surface. You don't need the palette that I'm showing on screen but I do highly recommend it. <laughs> um, to use a large mixing surface and this allows you to create the entire range or a larger range of mixes between the two colors you're mixing. If you're using a palette with like tiny spaces, you can only mix one mixture at a time. Using a larger mixing surface the way that you see now on screen really gives you that almost full range of what your colors can do. And also visually, I think it's much easier to kind of see what they do, especially when you're mixing colors where, you know, it's it's a little bit of a surprise what you're gonna get. You know, if you're mixing, let's say a transparent yellow with a transparent pink, you kind of know what you're gonna get. But once you start mixing complementary colors, complicated colors, colors with a few pigments, with granulation, it starts to be a bit more of a mystery. And this is a really great way of getting in a glance a range of what your watercolors can do. I also find this really, really helpful when I'm painting because this means I can very easily paint a shape. It can be a flower, a tree, a building, whatever you want with a lovely range of colors keep that color changing but not create you know mud on your page just gives it a variety of colors and you get a much more interesting look so for example if i were painting a tree this would be a great way of using these two colors and mixing your watercolors this way um, this is something that might be obvious to some people, but it took me a really, really long time to understand that this is how I want to mix colors and that is what in, what is interesting to me, like that range of mixtures you can get. And of course this works for more than just two watercolors. You can add a third one and kind of create uh, a little triad on your palette. You can use something like a butcher tray and have even a bigger surface. I have my go-to palettes, one you can see now on screen and the other one in the background and they both have that surface. Okay, moving on to tip number three. So this one has to do with kind of control controlling the water to pigment ratio on your brush. 
And the tip here is to use a paper towel or a cotton cloth or whatever it is that you use to absorb water from your brush, but apply it to the base of your brush. And what this does is you won't have to lose all the pigment that you have on your brush. You will lose some of it, but it's a really great way of mostly absorbing water without having to completely, you know, dry your brush and reload it. So here you can see my water, my brush is very, very juicy and just touching it with a cotton cloth just to the base of it absorbs the majority of the water, but still leaves me with enough pigment. Uh, this works, my brush here is a little bit small, but this works particularly well with larger brushes. Moving on to tip number four, and this one has to do with brushes. And I'm talking about dagger brushes, or let's say brushes with long bristles that can give you a very fine line and also more substantial brush strokes. Uh, some brushes do it better than others. Here I'm showing you a few of my favorites, although I do have to say that a Skoda brush, which is super popular, I got it uh, after the recommendation of Angela Fair, one of my favorite teachers and artists, and I used it for several years, but um, I felt like it wasn't a perfect fit for me. And so I moved on to some other brushes that work better uh, for my personal style. And I've talked a lot about the Tracy Levinson brush, which you see here on the right side, but I have a couple of other uh, options that are more affordable and work particularly well for those later stages of my paintings where I like to add brush strokes, detail, and more intense application of color. I love these brushes because they can do so much and I don't have to switch to a different brush, which really allows me to get into that, you know, just like painting zone and not have to stop. I can add thick, expressive brush strokes. If I use the brush drier, then I get these gaps, which I love. Uh, it's great for splattering, although it does get a little bit messy. <laughs> and as you can see, you can make super, super fine lines. So I really have come to love these brushes and use them on every single painting that I paint. I can't imagine painting without them. And I feel like a lot of artists will talk about, you know, larger brushes, especially if you're painting in a looser style. They will talk about the larger brushes for the beginning and the smaller brushes for the details more at the end. But these ones can give you uh, a really nice variety that I don't feel you can get with, you know, a large brush and a small brush. The one from Tracy Levinson that you saw at the beginning, that one is kind of my workhorse and I usually start my paintings with it and then I go with it as far as I can go before switching to one of uh, the other brushes. So these are my go-to and I think they are beautiful and definitely worth trying out. You can find the Tintoretto brushes at Jackson's. They're very affordable. They come in a variety of sizes, although I do have my favorite <laughs> sizes. I will try to give you my personal preferences in the comment section or in the info section. And if I forget, just give me a timestamp and uh, a question in the comments and I will fill that missing information. My last tip has to do with mixing colors, <laughs> something I'm very, very passionate about, just color and color play. And that has to do with mixing colors that have different properties. And what I mean is to explore mixtures of opaque colors mixed with transparent colors, transparent non-graduating colors mixed with granulating colors, even colors that already have several pigments in them mixed with 
I don't know, your favorite single pigment or just any colors that are different from each other that you actually don't know exactly what you're going to get. And I love creating these mixtures and I really feel that this is one of those, I don't want to say like secrets, but it's one of those things that when I see those mixtures in my paintings, it's some of my favorite parts because I can't tell exactly how I got there. Uh, there's something for me about seeing a painting and kind of pointing out, okay, this is ultramarine blue, this is, oh, there's a cat, <laughs> this is, you know, quinacridone gold. Um, there's just something about it, like I want some magic. I want to look at a painting and kind of wonder, how did the artist do that? How did he get that color? That is so beautiful, so unique. It's so different. It's not something that everyone is doing. And this has been one of the things that I really found joy in. Some of my favorite mixtures are those kind of mystery mixtures. I did a video, I think a couple of years ago, just sharing a few. It's just a topic I feel like not a lot of artists really, I don't know, break down. When I learn from others, a lot of the time, you know, it's very, okay, this is how we're painting the tree, this is how we're mixing the green, and then it goes to this is how we're mixing uh, a neutral for shadows or whatever. It's very kind of goal-oriented, not necessarily just like exploring what the color can do and what kind of interesting mixtures we can achieve. So that is my top tip to you. Try mixing colors that you actually don't know what's going to happen when you mix them and mix the entire range, not just, you know, equal amounts, see what comes in the middle, because those are also some of the most magical ones, the ones that just a little bit of color in a different color. That is it for me this week. I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to know your favorite tips, the things you do when you sit down and paint and you feel like nobody's talking about it and you wish everyone knew this awesome tip. Uh, yeah, I leave you with some pencil work in watercolors because that's always fun. <laughs> so thank you so, so much for watching. I will see you next week with another video. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Stay safe. See you soon. Bye-bye.